Hey, thank you so much for joining us online today. We believe that God wants to use this message to speak directly to you. So as you listen, we want to encourage you, have an open mind and an open heart to hear what God's speaking to you. As well, you can access all the sermon notes from this message on our website and on our church app. So good to see all of you with us today. It's a blessing for me to be here with with you. We are in a season uh, that we'll experience a lot of graduations, individuals being promoted from one grade to another, or possibly graduating high school. Any high school graduates? Any graduate? Got to get more vocal about that. Exciting, exciting time. College grads. Anyone graduating from college? Graduating from college, several of you, yeah, good deal. Well, we're all in a phase and a time that we have to make decisions in different seasons of, of life. And it never seems to get easier along the way. As a parent, you learn to make decisions for your children, and then your children, and they, uh, they grow up, uh, they move off, but don't think the decision-making has stopped. They still need, still need help, they need guidance. They like to know mom and dad's still in their life. Well, in this series called Pathways, we wanna give you some very biblical, practical, and relevant things that you can use uh, to better follow God's path for your life. Because when you follow God's path, life just goes better. So last week, we talked about following God's will uh, you can access the notes through our website at lakeshorechurch.net or possibly just uh, pull notes from uh, last week. So today we're going to be talking about hearing God's voice. And I know that this is filled with a lot of different concepts, mystique, God's voice. Uh, so many times through the years, people have come to me, God told me. God told me something, which can be very dangerous. Because how do you, how, 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 do you, how do you say, are you sure God told you? How do you test that? Because sometimes they weaponize that phrase. God told me, and then they say something that, that hurts, or it's condemnation, or possibly a, a different direction. So today I want to be able to give you some a scriptural passage that we'll follow verse by verse and looking at just very solid direction for your life as we learn to hear God's voice. I want to look at Proverbs 3, verse 6, and this is the instruction. Listen for God's voice in everything you do. Everywhere you go, he's the one who will keep you on track. So learn to discern the voice of God. How does he speak and what manner and what temper? What type of instruction does he give you? What are the decisions that are those major decisions he will help you with? And then the Lord says, I will get, guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you and I'll watch over you. He said that he'll be there to say, look, you need to shift from here over to here. Stay down the center lane. Keep out of the ditches. So when I attended Christ for the Nations back in 1982, I didn't have any church upbringing and ended up at a very amazing Bible school, somewhat of a spiritual boot camp for those needing, like if you have no scripture knowledge at all, it was a great Bible school for me because they walked you through the uh, doctrinal foundations, what scripture was all about, Old Testament, New Testament, covenant. It was just so, so good for me. But I, I wasn't used to culture. 
I had no idea. So in chapel one morning, I'm there on maybe the second row from the front. I'm worshiping the Lord when I, I, I feel a bit paranoid. I look over, this young lady is looking at me and I'm wondering, I, is there something going on here? Sometimes they give you a clue, they'll do that, and you know, you need to do that. No clue. Continue to worship, and finally I, I, I said, what? <laughs> this young lady said, well, during worship, God told me I, I'm to marry you. <laughs> I, I'm from Arkansas. Didn't have a lot of church under my belt. And so I just said, well, if we're going to get married, maybe we should get to know one another first. <laughs> so I um, took my 68 Camaro over to their apartment complex, parked, went up, time for a date. Uh, we walked down to the car. The car would not start. Pretty sure I saw Denise messing with the wires earlier. <laughs> My wife, no, that didn't happen. It just wouldn't start. Next day I came to go pick it up, started right up. Can I tell you God works in mysterious ways sometimes? And uh, so I told Debbie, was her name, I said, I, the only time I'll be off from work again, I work for uh, Los Anato Hotel, Diane's former uh, boss, Philip Minshew. I know I'll be off on my birthday. Maybe we can go out then. Well, just so happened on November 20th, 1982, I was, uh, we were dedicating the library chapel at CFNI, and this young lady was standing beside me. And I felt the boldness of the Holy Spirit come upon me. And I just said to Denise, whom I'm now married to, I said, why don't you get a late pass for tonight? Well, that's kind of how I rolled, you know, just if she said no, it's really not rejection. So she went next door. Her next door neighbor so happened to be Debbie. <laughs> I got a phone call and uh, my friend informed me that I had two dates for the same night and which would I choose? Is it important to hear God's voice for your life? So actually I thought, which one will hurt me the worst? <clears throat> no, but that night I did choose to go out uh, with Denise and it was the best decision I ever made in my, in my entire life other than Christ. And it, uh, it chose, I, I chose well. But I, I wanna be able to help you and, and understanding how to hear the voice of God in your life in a practical way and, and not to get spooky and not to say God said or God told me, but yet knowing on the inside, just I, I, I feel this is the leading of the Lord. Does that make sense? I sense God guiding me in this area. So when it comes to knowing God's will, I, last week I said number one is pray, thank you. <laughs> Teachers have it hard these days. Number two, peace. Do I sense God's peace about it? This is very important. Number three, agree. Does my spouse agree? Uh, what about uh, church council? What about the word of God? Are there agreement? A cord of three strands is not easily broken. I'm gonna give you another one. Four, is there an open door? That doesn't mean that it won't open, but is it something that's even possible right now in my life? And if it is an open door, five is what? Wait for timing, opportunity. They that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. Don't rush into it because there can be the right thing that you rush into and it becomes a wrong timing. Wait for the right timing. In other words, wait for opportunity. We found this piece of property and when we first found it, we 
the elders walked the property and this is what they said. Now is not the time. Years later, we put together a land search committee, number one piece of property they came back with. In fact, this piece of land had sold to a development company. And so when the property committee presented this property as their number one prospect for a future campus, I thought, that looks so familiar. You see, back then, it wasn't the timing. Years later, it was the perfect time. We said yes, a little piece of property sold for 500,000, half a million, and we bought this for $600,000 cash. Can someone say thank you for the timing of God? The timing of God is so important. So, one, pray about it. Two, is there peace? Three, what about agreement? Four, if there is an open door, five, I wanna wait for opportunity. Press the brakes, pump the brakes a little bit, okay. So here we go, looking at this passage in 1 Samuel chapter three, this will help you. So how do I better hear the voice of God? Move closer uh, to God's presence. This is what young Samuel did. So uh, Hannah couldn't have a child, prayed for a uh, child, God gave her a child. Hannah said, I'm gonna give him to your service. So here he is working in the, in the temple or the church, and but, like the Eli, the high priest, wasn't a good guy. His sons were worse, Hophni and Phinehas. But still, Hannah made a promise. And so her young son, Samuel, was now serving, maybe 11, 12 years old. Uh, the lamp of God had not gone out, and Samuel was sleeping in the tabernacle near the ark of God. I, this is just profound to me, and I thought, Thank goodness they, hadn't, they didn't have that movie Raiders of the Lost Ark back then. I doubt that he would have chummied up to that ark knowing its power. Uzziah, uh, Uzziah who just reached out to steady the ark one time, killed him immediately. But yet it contained, in a sense, the presence of God. And so, when it came time for Samuel to choose his bunk, he wanted one closest to the presence of God and sleeping in the tabernacle. To be brought within the zone of God's voice is to be profoundly altered. That's what Oswald Chambers said. And getting into that place that God is speaking, he's communicating, and, and, and your spirit is picking up on those receptors it's a beautiful, powerful thing. And your life will be changed forever. So, first of all, what do we do? We, we get closer. Find a close place to the Lord. How do you do that practically? Get around godly people. God no longer dwells in temples made with hands, but where does he dwell? In you, and you, and you. I wanna surround myself with people who walk with God. Not perfect people but people who are sincere in the relationship with the Lord. And when you get around people who have a walk with God that's very genuine and sincere, it's much easier to hear God because you're hearing God speak through them. And even noticing how God might speak. How does he come across? Well, we know in the Bible that Elijah, when he needed to hear a word from the Lord, uh, he was running from danger, Jezebel, found a cave. And the first thing that happened was like this, this tempest, this wind that knocked the rocks off the mountain. That wasn't the Lord. And then this earthquake that shook the temple. Now, in that moment, I would think, well, maybe, maybe that's the Lord. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And then a fire. Lord was not in the fire. We look for the extremes when many times this is where God is. The still small voice. In other words, a whisper. Something quiet, something, the still small voice of God. And you'll hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. So in order to hear the whisper, you need quiet in your life. You need a time to get quiet. So, best thing to do is begin serving 
the Lord. Look at this. Meanwhile, the boy, boy Samuel served the Lord by assisting Eli. Meanwhile means between one event and another. Rather than do nothing in the gap, serve. Find some place, find your place in the body of Christ to be doing something. Serving has a way of tuning your ear to the voice of God. It doesn't have to be something great. It, I mean, can we thank God for all of those serving our babies right over here? Come on, put your hands together. Thank you, they're serving right over here. And when you serve, it activates something within your life called sensitivity. Sensitivity, obedience leads to a more sensitive, tender spirit when you, when you serve. So begin serving God. Look at this. Uh, next is find the best time to listen for God's voice. Now, my best time to hear God and Mitchell Mershon's best time to hear God are different. Mitchell, who was just up here, I mean, he, I mean, he meets with God early in the morning. I don't. I'm kind of surprised my spirit's even up here right now. I, it takes me a while. And I think this was for Samuel as well. Look at this. One night, someone say night, Eli, who is almost blind by now, had gone to bed. And this is my, is my zone. I just, I just love quiet. People have gone to bed. It's me and the Lord. And again, not to say you can't meet with God in the morning. You should. It's biblical. So, but suddenly the Lord called out, Samuel. Yes, Samuel replied. What is it? And he got up and he ran to Eli, thinking the voice was Eli's, not God's. Here I am, did you call me? I, I didn't call you, Eli replied. Go back to bed. So he, this happened three times. Some of us can only hear God in the thunder of revivals or in public worship. We have to learn to listen to God's voice in the ordinary circumstances of life. Bedtime, morning time, ordinary circumstances of life. Life. I was meeting with a group of men on Tuesday morning. I shared this story with you, and there's a young man uh, there in the restaurant, and he was facing a brick wall. He was slumped over with kind of a knapsack, a backpack up here. And all I got when I was checking out, he kind of did this. I didn't see any food, so I, I went over and I just slipped a $10 bill beside him. I said, hey, breakfast is on me. So in a moment, he got up, ate some breakfast, walked over, and very cordial. And he said, sir, I, I want to thank you for breakfast this morning. He said, I've not eaten in a long time. A homeless. He was homeless, living out behind uh, that little area of, of Chiloso. Well, the next Tuesday, because I'd invited him to come and just sit with us and join us for breakfast, another young man from Lakeshore ends up showing up after working the night shift, and he shows up, and I introduce Chance, the homeless guy, with Isaiah, if you know the story of the, the red tie. He's that boy. And so I, uh, they got together, they, uh, they made friends, and uh, sometime back we had that really, really bad storm. You know, the one that I, I like covered my truck up with <laughs> stuff with. By the way, I can't get the tape residue off. That's a problem, but never do that. Never do that. Well, Isaiah went up and down the streets of that area in Rockwall, and he found Chance. And he took the homeless boy home with him. And... This past weekend, they show up in church. They both run up at the end of the service, and I encourage you to come up for prayer at the end of service. It'll complete your day in a way I can't begin to explain. So they come up, and they're both just beaming, and they, they said, we got accepted. I said, what? We, we got accepted. We applied for a plumbing apprenticeship, and we've both been accepted. 
And I, they go away on a trip, I guess, for training. Anyway, Chance looks at me. He said, I get to stay in a hotel. I get to stay in a hotel. We so underestimate the activity of God in ordinary things, connections, a glance, a breakfast, nighttime. These moments, God's voice in the ordinary circumstances of life, you don't have to be sitting in a sanctuary to have an encounter with God. You can be at home at night, seeking his heart for your child, praying for your marriage, asking for wisdom and guidance in regard to your business, what your next step is for life. But again, oh God, would you help me see you, Lord, in the flowers of the field, Lord, in the, in the birds of the air, Lord, in, the, in, in that ocean that, Lord, creates such beauty. Let me see you in the every day. And fourth, ask the Lord to speak to you. So Samuel saying, Eli, are you, are, are you calling my name? And the Lord came and called as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel replied, speak your servant is listening. I want, I want you to try this, e even now. Lord, please, I, speak to me. I'm listening. I'm turning the radio off, canceling the distractions. Speak. I'm listening. And watch what the Holy Spirit does in those moments. It may take a minute, but don't rush it. Wait to hear the impression that he puts upon your life. Then the Lord said to Samuel, I'm about to do something shocking, a shocking thing in Israel. First words, hey, you would think it would be a little less severe than that. Hey, I'm about to turn the world upside down. I, I, I'm going to do something and everyone's ear is going to begin to tingle. And here this 11, 12-year-old boy was going to have to sit down with Eli and tell him the trouble he's in but because he neglected the voice of God and that he did not raise his boys in a way to honor God. Their end was not going to be good. Shocking. My sheep listen to my voice, I know them, and they follow me. Uh, we have to be careful because people will come and say, well, I heard this, I heard that. But don't believe everyone who claims to speak by the Spirit. You must test them to see if the Spirit they have comes from God. For there are many false prophets in the world. So here's something that you can do. Uh, is it consistent with scripture? Because anything that goes against the word of God is not the word of God. Two, is this individual committed to a body of believers or, or are they rogue and independent and rebellious? Is there alignment? Is there an elder body that they submit to, a, a church that they connect with, that they serve in? And what about their character? Is their character consistent with how we should be as believers? Does that make sense? Test it rather than accept it and go the wrong way. And lastly, just obey his voice. Do what he says. Yes, Lord, I will obey. Then the Lord appeared again and again. Appeared again in Shiloh, for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh, by the word of the Lord. The word Shiloh is a two-part word. It means gift and it means peace, like shalom. Shiloh, the gift of peace. And here the Lord appeared to Samuel by the word of the Lord. We need that, the nearness of God. 
Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I'll come into him and dine with him and he with me. This is a testament to the, the graciousness and the love of God for you. It, his, he wants to sit down with you and have a conversation with you. It's what God wants to do. Behold, I stand at the door, talking about your heart, and, and I'm knocking. If anyone hears his voice, is it, is it really loud? No, it's a whisper. Hey, hey Ben. Hey. I have a friend, and I used his name last service. I won't do it again, but um, I'm going to call him Charles. I have a friend, uh, a good, good friend named Charles. And his pastor came to him one day and said, God told me to fire you. And Charles has never recovered. He's never recovered. He's hurt and he's not been healed. Years, years, years have passed. And just the other day, Charles called me. He lives in another region. He said, hey, would you come see me? I said, well, sure I would. You see, Charles, because of that spirit of rejection, he's gone this way and that way. In fact, he's not known which way to go. God has given you this instinctive ability to connect with him and know direction, know which way to go. But when you have severe woundedness, it's like your compass has been broken. Your spiritual compass has been broken. Because someone said, God said, I need to fire you. In other words, you think God rejected you. Or something spoken to you was so cutting and severe. But God does not talk like that. And we shouldn't either. Yeah. Would you bow your head with me? I, if, if, if you've been wounded by the words of someone who should have known better, and they may not have said God said, but they did it in the name of God, again, heads bowed, this is a private moment. And you're still carrying that, 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 that wound, that deep wound of words. W would you look up at me right now? Meet me eye to eye, just look up at me. Thank you. Just look up at me. Thank you. Just don't raise your hand. Just look at me. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh, God knows. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. A little over one third of you. Heavenly Father, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. You're my Lord, you're my Redeemer. Father, I pray that whatever uh, negative, that uh, the thing that was toxic, created poison, created a curse. In the name of Jesus, I pray it breaks off of their lives, off of their families, off of their future, off of their past, Lord God, that it would no longer cease to, it would cease to exist. In fact, I pray that that stronghold would be pulled down and demolished. For God loves you. He has a plan for you. He wants to speak to you. You are loved, you are forgiven, you are blessed. Receive all that he has. And now, for those that uh, maybe you've never heard his voice, but you're, you're feeling, you're sensing the knock on that heart, and God is saying, I need you to go all in with me. Open the door all the way. And if today you're willing to open that door all the way to Jesus and surrender your life fully to him, I'm asking you to make a commitment right now. Just lift your hand high and say, that's me. I'm making a commitment to go all in with God, to hear his voice, to follow his spirit, to be guided by his truth, and to live a life pleasing to him. Lift it high. Lift it up high. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I'm going to follow you. I'm going to serve you. 
obey you, hear you, Lord, speak to me. I will show you the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy and at your right hand, pleasures evermore. Let's pray together. Dear Jesus, thank you for speaking to me. I respond to you by repenting of my sins, receiving you as my savior, and asking you to fill me with your spirit. Jesus, be the Lord of my life. I will serve you forever. Thank you for hearing my prayer, forgiving my sin, and saving my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, everybody, let's praise God for those who made the best decision of their life. Thank you so much for joining us online today. If you made a decision to follow Christ, we'd love to send you a brand new Bible and a devotional guide to help you in your new journey of faith. To get these resources or to submit a prayer request, just fill out our digital communication card by texting the word Lakeshore to 94000. We'd love to celebrate what God is doing in your life and help you with your next steps. Thanks again for joining us. We hope to see you soon.